Good morning. Welcome to worship on this third Sunday in the season of Easter. Today we are taking a jump out of John's Gospel into Luke's Gospel, where we hear more of the resurrection story. But in this particular scene in Luke's Easter story, we have two travelers moving down a road by themselves, not sure what to do with themselves because they are living between two truths. One is that they have seen Jesus crucified, and now they have heard from the women that Jesus has been raised from the dead. So they are trying to figure out what to believe. And in the midst of their curiosity and consternation, a stranger walks up in between them and joins them in the conversation and becomes their companion along the way. So today we're gonna to talk about what it means for us to be companions to one another and to have Jesus as our companion on this faith journey. guide my every way will I receive the words you say every moment of every day I will walk by faith even when I cannot see because this broken road prepares your will for rid my endless fears you've been so faithful for all my years with one breath you make me new your grace covers all I do I will walk by faith even when I cannot see broken road prepares your will for me well I'm broken but I still see your face well you've spoken pouring your words of grace I will walk by faith even when I cannot see The grace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, your Son chose to become our companion along the way, breaking bread with us in holy fellowship. Reveal him to us again today, that our eyes may be open to his redeeming work as we walk by faith. Amen. The Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Now on the same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. 
one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women in our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen the vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he, he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Grace and peace to each one of you from Jesus Christ, who comes to us as our companion on the road. Amen. This morning we encounter two travelers who are on the road moving from Jerusalem to Emmaus, a small town just outside of Jerusalem, uh, and they are talking along the way because they're trying to wrap their minds around the new circumstances that they have just become aware of. They're trying to make sense of what you might call a new normal, where since they've only seen Jesus crucified a few days before, and now they're hearing that Jesus has been raised from the dead, they're trying to put together all the facts and make sense of what they're supposed to believe. That was their new normal. We have our own new normal that we are adjusting to. And that new normal began more than seven weeks ago now, where um, we heard from the governor of our state that we were supposed to practice social distancing, which really we found out meant physical distancing. And then no sooner had we come to be aware of that, then we were told by the governor that we were going to need to stay at home, if at all possible. If we were essential workers, we would be out in the world doing our jobs. If we were non-essential workers, we were to stay at home, work from there if possible, and not work if it wasn't possible. So we are adjusting to a new normal. 
And um, that new normal has required us to think about how we are connected to each other in ways that we had not been considering before. See, until the pandemic, we just thought that our lives were ours to make happen. But since the pandemic, we see our neighbors in a new way because those neighbors are people that we have to depend on to help preserve our lives. And that means that we are also neighbors to others whose lives depend on us. Until our lives were on the line, we hadn't really considered what kind of companions we would be to each other. Now, suddenly, we see how much we need each other. And I think that it is particularly true for us as we are not able to come together physically for church, but find ourselves gathering in this way. That said, it's also true that in the last week, particularly, we have seen some people begin to push back on this idea of stay-at-home orders. Uh, and why they are doing that, there are a variety of reasons. One may be that they want to be employed or that they need to find employment. Um, another reason may be that people simply feel that their personal freedoms have been infringed on. And others we hear just want a chance to relax at the massage therapist. I don't know if you saw this picture in the news this past week, but I'm gonna ask Duane to bring this up on uh, video for you so you can see it. It's a picture that took place, the, the setting took place at the Arizona State Capitol. And it's a picture of a man waving a, an American flag in front of a nurse who is dressed in her scrubs and wearing gloves and wearing a mask, um, standing in front of him as he waves that flag uh, with her arms crossed. The man is declaring that he has the right to do with his body as he sees fit and um, asserting his personal freedom. So here's the interesting thing about that. It's almost as if that man is saying one of those familiar phrases that we have heard in the past, every man for himself. But every man for himself is not the way God operates. And if it were true that God believed every man for himself, that not only would he not have sent Jesus to us, but we would have been on our own, and that means that God would have ditched us a long time ago. I wanna take us back to that picture, though, of that nurse and that man waving his flag. And look at it again, because while that man was waving his American flag in that nurse's face, she actually reported later that she declared to him, sir, I understand that you value your personal freedom, but I need you to know something about how I plan to treat you if you end up in my emergency room. See, my job is to make sure that I do everything I can to keep you alive. And so I've made a vow that I will do that, that I will see you through. And if you do not live and I end up having to prepare your body for burial, I want you to know that I will do that with the utmost care. Effectively, this nurse was saying to this man who was protesting for his personal freedom, I will be your companion, live or die. Interestingly, this last Wednesday when we had our Bible study in preparation for the sermon this Sunday, one of our Bible study participants noted that there's an interesting um, language thing that gets played with in this story of the road to Emmaus. See, when we get to the point of the travels where the traveling companions decide to stop in Emmaus and invite Jesus to join them, they end up sitting around the table together 
And while they've invited Jesus in, Jesus is the one who goes and picks up the bread, breaks it, and shares it with them. Now, I've always thought of this story as kind of a story about Holy Communion. But interestingly, the word for breaking bread, for breaking bread with these travelers is campanus in Latin. With bread, campanus in English is companion. Jesus, by sitting down at the table with these travelers, is declaring himself their companion. And what they realize as their eyes are opened and they realize that their hearts were strangely warmed is that the Jesus who is with them at the table is the very same Jesus who also was with them through his ministry and ultimately while he hung from the cross. See, Jesus shows us in his life and his ministry and his death and resurrection that there is no place that he will not be. That whether it is in our fear or our grief or even in our death, Jesus promises to be present with us, to be our companion. And that means that it's not only those two travelers who are on their way to Emmaus, that find Jesus to be a companion, but it also means that we find Jesus to be our companion, that we find ourselves walking with Jesus in these days. And as we walk with Jesus, what we find is that uh, not only does he show us um, what life in the resurrection looks like for us, that there is hope beyond the fear and the death that we witness. But he shows us that as we perceive the world through his eyes, we begin to see the rest of the world as our companions. So taking us back to that picture of the nurse, we see in people like this nurse, a companion given to us by God. Jesus says, I will be with you, I will walk with you, but now in my resurrection, I declare to you a new normal. A new normal that makes it pass possible for you to see beyond your fears. A new normal where you can witness the good work of others that benefits you in this time and beyond and stand and applaud their efforts because they are the helpers that are out there, the people who give us hope and show us their companionship. And soon enough, as we gather together in a variety of ways, as this new normal changes again, we will find ourselves on this journey physically together again, looking not only to Jesus to be our companion, but looking to each other as neighbors and friends and fellow travelers on this journey of faith. Thanks be to God. Amen.
share your joy and sorrow till we've seen this journey through. Will you let me be your servant? Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that Lifted by the hope of the resurrection, let us join the people of God in every time and place to pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Creating God, we give thanks for the blossoming dogwood trees and celebrate as wild animals benefit from reduced human activity. May all our days here on earth honor your creative hands. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. Sustaining God, there is weariness in our bones and in our hearts. Stand beside those who provide essential services and sit beside those who are struggling to get through the day. Nourish us when we don't know how. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. Providing God, with you abundance comes in surprising ways. Give us the courage to think outside the box in how we provide for others. May our elected officials and community leaders cross aisles so those without health care can live without worry. May they build bridges so that workers can stay safe in their workplaces. God of resurrection, Hear our prayer. Comforting God, we know that your spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. We pray for children in children's hospitals and all who are confused, scared, and feeling alone, and for all that we name before you now or in the silence of our hearts. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, your presence endures. May the faith-forming ministries of your church reflect your enduring presence. Guide, inspire, and nurture learners of every age and ability. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your care through the risen one, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You are a companion in this journey of faith we walk at Calvary Lutheran. Thank you for joining us in worship. If you would like more information about activities you can be involved in online or in person, please find us at www.calvaryfw.org. Oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will, will be done, done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. 
Amen. May the one who raised Jesus from the dead fill you with hope, open your eyes to his presence, and warm your heart to his resurrection life. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Like wheat arising green, Christ is risen. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. <laughs> 